people of the internet. Hello, people of the internet. Hello, people of the internet. Well, it's been a long time since I've said that. Um, first of all, I'm having some dental work done. I have some teeth taken out to let some other teeth be pushed through. So if I look goofy and I look gappy, that's what it is. No nasty comments, I'm having work done. Um, so I guess best thing to start to say is, um, or the best thing to where to start is, where have I been? Why did I go? Da, 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 da. So where have I been? Uh, working. <laughs> so obviously, when I used to make videos, I was working part time, um, and then I got um, still working part time, still for the same company, but I got put in a job role at a school to try and help turn the service around because the service we were su supplying wasn't the best. Uh, wasn't the best, so they wanted to put me in to see whether I could troubleshoot it. And um, working at a school, there's different uh, criteria, social media criteria, that you have to adhere to. And um, there was one person who knew about my YouTube channel. And the problem with working in a very large school, well, it's a series of schools, is that you can't really have a YouTube presence where kids can come along especially in the role that I was in so I basically had to um, I didn't have to but I chose to mm, take everything offline and also uh, there was other reasons as well one it was taking up too much of my time I was in a full-time job now and two is that I was totally unfiltered when I used to do my old YouTube videos um, I would get up in the morning, put a baseball cap on. I was just totally me, totally unfiltered, whatever. And um, I just got kind of a little bit sick of the judgment over certain things. You know, just like my caveat at the beginning that I've got gappy teeth at the moment because I'm having some dental work done. I shouldn't need to caveat anything about the way I look and the way I am. And so it was a bit crap having people telling me that I look like stick um, or looked like that I needed to dye my hair or um, had I put on weight um, because <laughs> so it was kind of like I was already getting a bit disillusioned with YouTube um, and then obviously I went into the full-time job and then after going into the full-time job and it being sort of like school related and there was this social media caveat it just sort of made sense to just stop everything so that's where I've been. Now, strangely, I've actually been, um, I can't believe it myself, at working at the school for two and a half years. It was May, two and a half years ago, <laughs> 2017, 2017, 2018, 2019, yeah, that I went there for one month to try and see what was going wrong. And I finished at the school in December, just literally a week ago. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm still working for the same company. I'm still doing the same job, but I won't be at the school or the series of schools or the trust of schools anymore, which means I could go back to making videos. Hence why when Michelle, hi Michelle, approached me and said, would I be interested in doing this video, which is the 2019 tag video, I said, yeah, because I was thinking of maybe doing some videos anyway, because, Next year, so many changes are happening, or we're hoping so many changes will happen, that I was thinking about getting my camera out again to sort of document some of the journey, all about the journey, me. Um, so, yeah, so when Michelle said, I was already sort of thinking about it, and when she sort of contacted me and said, do you want to do the tag video? I was like, eh, why not? Because it's an easy way to start. So I've got all the questions on a piece of paper. A cup of tea, not that I intend to be here this long. It's actually New Year's Eve um, today, so I'm going to literally film this and pop it straight up online in theory with no editing. And uh, yeah, so let's go through the questions. So, question one What was your happiest moment in 2019? 
The funny thing is, we have, I have lots of happy moments. I'm quite a happy person. So like little lots of little pockets of happiness and happy times, like playing games with my family. I've just gone home after staying here for Christmas and um, I turned the camera around, you'd see all the ball games on the floor. Um, and it, we just all sit around the table and have a fantastically happy time. Um, you know, walking, walking with my husband, holding hands and kicking leaves in the forest, sitting in the sun in summer, um, spending time so on a Saturday night, we always have film night where we get treats and turn the lights off and snuggle on the sofa and watch a film. He chooses one week, I choose the other week. And they're really little happy times. They're all happy times. But so I was trying to think of the happiest moment, you know, one specific standout moment. And the only one I could initially think of was a job related one, which I'm gonna hold on to for my proudest moment later on in the questions. And so the happiest moment that stuck in my mind from this year is me and my husband were away on holiday and we were walking on the beach and we were collecting stones because it's what we do, because we just we just go out and walk along, collect stones and then put them all back. And um, he fell over. He was trying to sort of climb up this bit and he fell over. So I was trying to pull him up and I started laughing and he started laughing and then he pulled me over. And I just remember feeling this, this bubble of total freedom. There was no one else on the beach. It was um, oh, March sometime or April. It was early in the season. Um, it wasn't warm. We wasn't in bikinis. We was in jeans and, you know, barber jackets. And uh, we were both ended up laying on the, like rolling on, rolling on the sand. Very, um, what's that film? You know, where they roll on the sand. Um, that one. Um, it was very, I don't know, just free. And I got up and I said, I feel so normal and free and relaxed and chilled and rosy cheeked. And we, you know, held hands and walked back up to the cottage kind of thing where we were staying. And it was just, I don't know, it was just, it stuck in my mind as a really lovely moment last year. So the next question and question two is what is your saddest moment of 2019? And it's gonna be really difficult because even thinking about what I'm gonna say is gonna get me upset. So let's try and hold it together. <laughs> and the saddest moment of 2019 was obviously lucky going to Rainbow Bridge. So um, obviously most of you who used to watch my channel know who Lucky is. He was my uh, Jack Russell Yorkie Yorkshire Terrier Cross, he was a rescue dog that we got in 2009, 2008, 2008, we had him 11 years. Um, unfortunately, he was diagnosed with stomach cancer. Um, just after we come back from that holiday, funnily enough, in March, and um, he just sort of got iller and iller, so he was put to sleep um, at the end of July. So I think if you can see up there, no, I'm not sure you can. There is actually a little, sure if I tip you up, you'll be able to see. Or will you? There, yeah, up there, look. There's a little shrine to Lucky up there. So definitely, without any shadow of doubt, my saddest moment of 2009, and it still makes me sad now. So let's move on. <laughs> um, what did you learn this year? Ooh. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I learn is it doesn't matter how hard you work or how hard you try to prove yourself to someone. If they have their own agenda and their own way of seeing things, there's nothing you can do. Now, I can't really go into more details than that, but I just know that one of my things that I do is forever trying to prove myself. Like if I'm doing a job, a work job, it has to be done perfectly and I, I get to the stage where I will work more hours than I need to do deliver more than I have over deliver I always over deliver and it doesn't matter how much you over deliver if someone just doesn't have that has their own agenda it doesn't matter how much you work for them so there's no point in killing yourself for someone else is basically what I've learned this year um, Next question, number four. Did this year go by fast for you? I think every year goes faster and faster and I believe it's because time is relative. 
here's the science. Um, when you're one years old, one year is 100% of your life. And 100%, you can't get any more than 100%, so that year will feel massive because it is in your entire life. When you're 10 years old, one year is just one tenth of your life. And one tenth is a shorter amount of time. And because it's sh oh, a shorter percentage, because it's a shorter percentage of the amount of time you've been on this earth, one tenth will feel shorter. When you're 100 years old, one year is one hundredth of your life. One hundredth is a tiny, tiny amount of time. So consequently, the older you get, the amount of time feels smaller because it's a shorter amount, a shorter percentage of the time that you've lived on this earth. So yes, this year went fast and next year will go even faster. Right, number five. <laughs> What foods will you cook, eat on New Year's Eve? Well, today is New Year's Eve and uh, the only thing we're going to cook is some vegetables to go with the cold meat that we've got in the fridge that's left over. Um, we've still got some ham left over from Christmas um, and we still have some, we cooked two turkeys because we're greedy. Now there's a lot of people and uh, we didn't cook one of them until Saturday. Saturday just gone because my family come round in shifts. Um, so some come for Christmas and then some come just after Christmas and they all want a turkey dinner around here so we cook Christmas Day turkey and then an after Christmas Day turkey so still some of that left so we're going to be having cold meat and vegetables and yeah, the only thing I'm going to be cooking for New Year's Eve is the vegetables um, have you picked question six have you picked out your outfit for New Year's Eve? Well, it is what I'm wearing, surely, because it is New Year's Eve. I'm wearing a green jumper, a white vest, and blue denim jeans. Um, but to be quite honest, it's unlikely that I'll be awake for New Year's Eve because I'm a dead to the world on the sofa by 10 o'clock usually, and I don't see that that's gonna be any different this year, purely because I just am an early bird and I wake up at five every morning, every morning without foul, weekend, not weekend, holiday, Christmas day. And so to stay up till midnight is really difficult. But generally what happens, me and my husband go to bed, he watches a film, I fall asleep. He'll wake me up at quarter to midnight and say, do you want to watch the fireworks? <laughs> I'll say yes, and we'll watch the fireworks. So if I'm not wearing this for New Year's Eve, I'll be wearing my onesie, which I still got, still love. You remember it from me dancing around the Christmas tree, wearing it. So yeah, me onesie. Um, what are you going to do on New Year's Eve? Well, I'm going to go to bed and I'm gonna wake up in a new decade. Right, question eight. This is the one I said I was gonna go back to when it said, what was your happiest moment? And it's, what is your proudest moment? <sighs> so, as you know, I've been working at a school for two and a half years. Um, and randomly, I got contacted by a headhunter um, with regard to a position at another, I keep saying school, it's not really a school. Nowadays we have these trusts which look after a, a number of schools. So and I was working for a trust which was a number of schools and I was contacted by a headhunter looking for someone to work for another trust of schools. And they said that they'd been looking, the job had been um, advertised for seven months and they had interviewed a number of people and they hadn't found the right person and they was wondering if I would, was interested in coming for a job interview and possibly going for the job. Now, I had no interest in looking for another job. I had no desire to look for another job. I was quite happy with the job that I had, you know, my part-time job before I went to work for the school. I must admit the school has been extremely hard work for two and a half years and I'm quite happy to go back to my old role in the job I was at now that school is moved on. <laughs> um, so, but I thought to myself, I haven't been for a job interview for 10 years since I took this role. Um, so, yeah, I might as well go for the interview. What the heck, it's quite nice to be contacted by a headhunter and um, you know 
So, um, they lined up the interview. It was a one-shot interview. Basically, the interview was in front of the... Oh, my legs are going numb. Hold on a second. <laughs> I've had to change position because my legs are gone numb. <laughs> Kneeling on my legs. Um, it was... Uh, yeah, so the interview was in front of the sea level panel. We would call it the board over here. I think American people call it the sea level. So the chief finance officer, the chief education officer, the chief technical director, and the chief HR whatever director. And um, the, I'm all dark now where I've gone down. Hold on, let's see if I can get back up. Oh, oh got pins and needles, pins and needles. Wait till the feeling comes back in my toes and then I'll, I'll start again. Oh, bubble. Right. Uh, so it was a one-shot interview in front of a panel of C-level C executives. You had to do a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, which you had to do a week in advance and send it to them so it would be on the board. Then you had to stand there and do the presentation. Then, so it was, I think it was a 10-minute presentation, 10 minutes questions on the presentation, then 30 minutes question and answers. So it was an hour long interview, blah, blah, blah. So I was thinking, all the time I was thinking, oh, I don't even know why I said I'd go for this interview. I, I'm not even really looking for another job. And, um, but I sort of just went with it because that's me, I'm very malleable. I'm very, if someone asks me to do something, I generally do it because um, I'm nice like that. Um, so I went for the interview and it was, deep, deep in London, and uh, so I went for the interview, I did the presentation, sent the presentation over, the headhunter said, oh, it was a really good presentation, he liked the way what I'd done and my, my turn of phrase on it and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, went for the, for the interview, uh, did the presentation, seemed to go well, did the interview, seemed to go well, came out of the interview, the headhunter met me and took me for a coffee after and asked me how it went, I said, yeah, it was all right, I didn't seem to have any trouble with the questions, but... It's hard to know on these things. That was on the Friday. And then on the Wednesday, they phoned me and said they'd like to offer me the job. Which, I can't explain to me why this makes me proud, but I'm going to try. So, first of all, the job is an executive level job. More money than I have ever earned in any job that I've ever been in now. Before I, I used to work in the city and I stopped working in the city when I was 40 and I used to earn a lot of money in the city. I was a high level technical person in a very bespoke role and I took voluntary redundancy when I was 40, run my own business for a little while and then got bored at home running my own business and got a small little local part time job three days a week, which is a job I'm still in today. Um, and I just thought that was my lot now. This, I'm kind of sort of, I'm old. <laughs> I'm not cutting edge technology anymore. And I kind of thought that was my lot now. I kind of, I'd had a really good career. I'd got really good career and got to the top of my position that I could really go to for a woman in, a, in IT career. And then basically I sort of didn't, there wasn't anywhere for me to go from there. So I basically gave up everything and then sort of just did my own thing. So to be offered this really high level executive job and the money, a lot of money. It was, I was actually just about to go into a team meeting on the Wednesday morning. We always have a team meeting. I run the team meeting. And just as I was walking in the door of the meeting room, my mobile rang. I looked, it was the headhunter. I shut the door again. I said, be back in a second, guys. Shut the door, phoned him, and he said, you've got the job. Or I answered the phone, and he said, you've got the job. And they've offered you the full package, the full, because it was like, you know when they do a salary and they go, well, it's 75 to 100K, or whatever it is. Um, he said, they've offered you the full package, no negotiation, the full salary, the top end. Um, and I, was, I just went, great. And I said, look, I'm really sorry. Literally, I'm just about to walk into a meeting. I'll phone you back after. I hung up, I walked in there, and it sunk in that I had been offered this job. <laughs> and I remember sitting there trying to run the meeting, going, okay guys, <laughs> um, so basically what we're gonna talk about now, oh my God, I can't believe it. 
And they, everyone thought I was having some kind of, uh, you know, weird episode because I was just so overawed. But the strange thing is, I didn't accept the job because it suddenly it wasn't about the job. I didn't actually want to change jobs. And but this whole thing of being being validated enough to I'll be offered this job has given me a whole new concept now of the fact that it doesn't matter what's happened over the last two and a half years and how I, you know, have really struggled to kind of prove that the company that I work for can deliver a good service, that I can deliver a good service, and I feel like I'm always up against it or have been up against it, that all of a sudden to be offered this amazing job and someone else just you know look at me doing a presentation look at my cv ask me the questions and my answer it and be able to offer me this job that's i realized that it doesn't i don't need to be validated i this validated me this job validated me and said you are good enough and because and that's all i needed it made me extremely proud i said i can't believe it but i'm not taking the job <laughs> which is crazy because all of a sudden i don't need it i mean i never anyway I think you get what I'm trying to say. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I think you get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, um, it made me extremely proud to be offered this job, this very high level job, because I thought, I'm old now, I've peaked at my career and I'm going back down. I'm, you know, I'm destined to work as a dinner lady in a, in a school canteen. I've never worked as a dinner lady in a school canteen and it's not a bad job. One of my friends does it and I love her. So, but you know what I'm saying, you kind of, when you get to a certain age, your career changes. Anyway, so it made me extremely proud. Um, what will you do different in 2020? Well, based on this validation from this job that I've got, um, lots of things, but mainly work less. <laughs> um, certainly work less for other people. Uh, there are some things that I'm going to do um, which are related to still going to be bringing money in, but they're for me, not for other people. So number one, work less for other people. And number two, let things go. Let it go. I can't sing. Uh, and I don't mean stuff, though I do mean stuff. I don't just mean stuff. I mean, let more stuff go. Stuff, stuff, you know, stuff. <laughs> um, but also let relationships go that no longer serve their purpose. I mean, there are some friends that I have basically been friends with for a while but they add as I said they, add, they don't add any value to my life that sounds really selfish but then they need to add value to your life don't they um do you know what I mean it's it, 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 I can't say friendships it's not about what I want it's what about what they want no it's not sometimes friendships is what about or things in your life about what, what you want and there are some friendships that I've had to let go because it's always always about what i can do for them and i'm not going to be that person anymore so there's a few friendships that i've let go and there'll be more of those more of those there isn't many more to go but you know what i mean um i'm just not going to be the i have been validated <laughs> i'm not going to be the rollover person anymore and just do stuff for people all the time i'm doing stuff for me Boof, bit bad time at my age, eh? Um, so the letting things go. So I'm just going to work less for other people and let more stuff go, um, uh, which is actually similar. My word of the year this year. If anyone's still interested in words of the year, is change. Uh, so change, change, change everything really. Um, so what are your new number ten? God, we'll get there in the end. This is a very long video, isn't it? Number 10 is, what are your New Year's resolutions for 2020s? Number one, not kneel down so much because it makes your legs go numb. But let's stick with it. Um, so number one is to walk every day. Since poor Lucky isn't with us anymore, he used to get walked twice a day. I used to do either one or both of those walks and I would walk easily two miles or more a day, probably at least 40 minutes to an hour a day because he'd go out for... 20 minute half hour walks twice a day um, since 
obviously we don't have lucky anymore. Not walking anymore and I've put on half a stone. <laughs> and I know half a stone isn't a great deal and I'm whatever, but I just wanna go back to daily walking. So I have a goal to walk, uh, start walking at least a mile a day, which is very easy to do because I can get go to the post office and back and I get that done. Um, but basically a minimum of two miles a day, every day, I have to walk every day, at least a mile, hopefully two, but it does depend on the weather and what else I'm doing, but I will walk every day. Um, and then these are the two big things or goals rather than New Year's resolutions that I wanna do every day uh, for, for 2020, the new decade, is I'm doing a no spend. If you've twisted round, that's because you're balanced on a Unipod selfie stick in a coffee maker full of chocolates <laughs> to keep you balanced because I can't find my tripod. Thought I'd tell you that. So you have twisted around a little bit and I've tried to twist it back. Um, so the no spend uh, resolution. So first of all, what is a no spend? A no spend is spending, not spending any money on non-essentials. So obviously essentials are food, uh, consumables like deodorant and um, shampoo and uh, feminine products if you still need those. I still need those. Um, so all those kind of things are essentials like you know food, travel, going to work, uh, whatever. The non-essentials are clothes, handbags, uh, books, uh, art materials, uh, board games, all that kind of stuff frivolous stuff that's the stuff that I'm no spending on now I did do a no spend in 2017 and I went to about all oh, no it's about July and then I needed some new summer tops and I bought two or three new summer tops so I broke my new oh I can hear something outside I brought I broke me uh that year no spend um but i haven't i don't spend much anyway so basically every month i have a credit card i pay off my credit card every month and what goes on that credit card are my spends and i have been well for about five years now maybe four um my spends have always been less than a hundred pound a month now <laughs> some people might go oh my god she spent a hundred pounds every month on unnecessary crap um, but some people spend a hundred pound in boots or makeup in one week uh, or one day. Um, a hundred pound a month would be, could be anything. Most months were always a hundred under a hundred pound, and then certainly for the last year, I haven't really spent anything in on anything. You know, the occasional book I might buy a book, you know, seven ninety nine on Amazon, um, or the occasional this baseball cap. It's my new baseball cap that I bought in the sale, which was five ninety nine, <laughs> stuff like that. But I haven't really spent probably more than twenty or thirty pound for a month for quite some time. So I think it's going to be fairly easy for me to do a no spend. Um, but it's a no spend with a difference. Not only do I want to do a no spend, now this is where it gets difficult to describe. So I've got my salary, here comes my salary that I earn every month, and that goes into a bank, and some of it goes into a joint account to pay for our bills and you know food and whatever, and some of it goes into savings, that's what happens with my money. Then I have my credit card, and on that credit card um, is any frivolous purchases that I, that I purchase, plus there are three things every month that I pay for that are either gift or charity related. So for example, my brother has a mobile phone that I pay for, because for whatever reason, I pay for his mobile phone. Um, that's 20 pound a month. Um, then we have, I have some charities that I give to that have like standing orders. And then obviously I have some website hosting and all this kind of stuff. Um, and that comes to around 120 pound a month. So obviously here's my salary, it comes down, some of it goes into a um, joint account, uh, some of it goes into my account, and around 120 pound a month, plus any frivolous purchases, go on to pay off the credit card every month, because this is the, they're not my, 
they're not they're not my spends if you know what I mean so this no spend not only do I want to not spend anything and make this 120 pound anymore I also want to earn an extra income <laughs> of 120 pound a month or more I actually want a target of 150 um, to negate this payment altogether so here's my salary doing its own thing and here's this 150 pound a month extra income from somewhere um, to pay for this so it's going to be a no spend plus earning 150 pound extra so all this money that i earn will just go on essentials and savings now that's oh my god where are you going to get i thought you said you was going to work less for more than all this kind of stuff i am going to work less i'm selling stuff on ebay I've always been selling stuff on eBay. Um, I think I did a video about, if anyone remembers about, I was trying to do, a couple of years ago, I did a 200 pound a month challenge and I kept it up for the entire year. And um, that year, I think I made about 5,000 pounds, sold about 5,000 pounds worth of stuff on eBay. And it's, it's the stuff that I'm decluttering. You know, if it's something that has value, I'll sell it on eBay um, in December. This month just gone, I sold £1,200 worth of stuff on eBay. Um, so that's aside from everything else that I do. So yeah, so zero spend and get £150 a month from selling my old stuff to cover the outgoings that I have here. If you've been watching, you'll know what this is. And then the... So that's one. That's number two resolution. Number one was walk less. Number two, walk less. Number one was walk more. Number or walk daily. Number two was zero spend plus one hundred and fifty. And then the third resolution is a net loss of items from the house. So if I'm doing a zero spend, nothing's coming in. Now I was doing a one in one out. So if I bought a new pair of shoes, a new old pair of shoes had to go, and I've been doing that for. A few years five years so new jumper old jumper out. in fact i'd only go and look to buy a new jumper if i had an old jumper that was needed to be replaced i wouldn't just go and look at jumpers for the sake of it bring a jumper home and then have to come home and get rid of a jumper so basically it was only if a jumper needed replace this is a jumper by the way anyone now watching out what's the jumper sweater jumper ladies top so if i needed to buy a new sweater an old sweater would go so I've been doing that for quite a while. Um, but now what I want to do is, that zero stuff is coming in, because I'm doing a zero spend, is start going minus, so more stuff is going out. So we're calling it the net loss of items from the house. So rather than five things come in and six thing, four things go out, it is nothing comes in and more stuff goes out. Now, I wanted to do a minimalism game again, or minimalist game again, but that gets a bit hard towards the end, especially when you're sort of working or you're under pressure to get the 25, 26, 27 items. Um, so my goal is one item a day, um, 30 items a month. That's very achievable, because even if it's a coat hanger, a mug or whatever, things can go. Um, so in theory, my net loss of items for the year should be 365 minimum things leaving the house, nothing coming in, 365 going out, downsizing even more. And the whole reason for downsizing even more is GTFO of London. <laughs> we are looking and we've been looking for two years. We are going to be definitely looking with more vengeance. This year is that we are looking to move out of London um, we have found a little town we went on holiday there three years ago and we've been looking for a house there for the last two years and got close a couple of times to buying one of them um, and yeah we there's just a renewed effort to do that this year to move um, move to our next place and it'll be our place where we retire i know we're not at the retirement age yet but um we're gonna buy it get it ready blah blah, blah. anyway so that's another reason why we're gonna declare and i have spoken for way too long i thought this was going to be a 10 minute video 
This little bit here is 10 minutes long. I'm sorry I chewed your ears off. If anyone is interested in me carrying on doing videos and watching me declutter even more and move and give you updates on my no spend and maybe even my walk-in and watch me get new teeth as this develops and I get um, these teeth come through and whatever is happening, um, let me know and I'll carry on do video and do more videos. But if not, Happy New Year, everyone. And um, I wish you all the very best and most importantly, health and happiness for the whole new decade. Happy New Year. And thanks for tagging me, Michelle.